Welcome to the Pillow Talk podcast. This is Will Beck. I'm your host. And today I am joined by Colleen Foch. Colleen is a... What a start. What a start, Colleen. It's <laughs> okay. all good. Welcome to the Pillow Talk podcast. This is Will Beck. I'm your host. I'm joined by Colleen Foch. Colleen is a collegiate swimmer. She is a cross games athlete. She's a data analyst and a really nice person. So Colleen, oh, thank thanks you. for coming to hang out with me today. Yeah, thank you for having me. So we met because I gave you a pillow cube. Yes. What, what, what happened when I gave it to you? I am obsessed and I'm not just saying that. Like it has been a game changer, especially having like I uh, went to Dallas last weekend to visit some siblings and to be able to have like the smaller, like the original pillow mm -hmm. cube for traveling is just incredible. Cause I mean, hotel pillows, like it's usually just not a great thing. And then like, you're just not getting great sleep for a few days. And so it's just awesome to be able to travel with that one and have one at home. So yeah. Everybody hates the hotel pillow. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> Yeah, and I actually, uh, I think I had told you this last time we chatted, but I uh, let my boyfriend borrow one of mine, like the smaller ones, mm -hmm. and he's um, was over in Europe. He's on the bobsled team, actually just qualified for the Olympics. And congrats, it, boyfriend. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he said it also has been great as a back support on planes, which I yeah. had not tried yet, but I was mm -hmm. like, that is good to know. So so yeah, no, it's, it's just been a game changer. So I, I love it. Can we name names on the boyfriend? Is this a public thing? We want to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's public. Uh, Carlo Valdez. Is his okay. Name. And he's yeah. in the Olympics. Yeah. Yeah. What, what event is he doing? So he's going to be uh, in bobsledding. And mm -hmm. so they leave tomorrow um, to go out to Beijing. So, so yeah. bobsled, they have two-man teams, four-man teams. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. So it sounds like, uh, so he will for sure be doing four-man and two-man is still uh, up in the air right now. So and yeah. how do those work? Like what position is he? So in four-man, he is usually on the right side if you're like facing the pilot. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. So usually not um every time but usually it's on the because there's two well there's the pilot who's in the front and then two other guys on each side who are um not only fast but really strong powerful and then usually the brakeman the one in the very back is crazy fast um mm -hmm. so yeah but he'll usually uh go between either right or left but usually on the right yeah, yeah. that's cool it's been a long time since i've watched cool running so my yeah. <laughs> my bobsled tech terminology is really behind right now. Oh, no I'll, worries. I'll get warmed up. I'll watch it again before the Olympics so I know what oh, I'm perfect. <laughs> talking about. You know? Yeah, that's awesome. So you mentioned a word obsessed when you yeah. talked about pillow cube. Yes. Like what makes you obsessed? I just, so I feel, so I'm a side sleeper. Mm -hmm. Um, used to sleep on my stomach a lot, but that was messing with my neck and my shoulders and stuff. So became a side sleeper. And I feel like I was always in between either having one pillow or like smushing two pillows on top of each other. But like, there was no happy medium. Like I was either like my head was too low. So that was kind of putting a kink in my neck. Also, like I've had shoulder issues. I've had shoulder surgery. So like that was also putting some pressure on my shoulder. Um, and then, you know, stacking two pillows up, then you're like kind of jammed the other way. And so I just couldn't find like a good, happy medium. Um, I also feel like in general, it's a cooler pillow, like temperature wise mm -hmm. as well. Yep. And I am a very warm sleeper. Um, Hot and sleeper. Yes. Like I set yeah. my room to 62 degrees. Oh, night. wow. <laughs> so, yeah. So I like to sleep in an igloo, essentially. That's um, like camping in your yeah. own house. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so I very much appreciate that it is cool in temperature as well. So it just like checks all the boxes like that Do I need for good sleep. 
Do you have the ice cube pillow yet? No, I don't. Oh my gosh. We're going to have to talk afterwards. Yes. We, we have a that. kind of a cooling pillow that kind of wicks away heat. So oh, and that then would be fantastic. <laughs> on the hot sleeper topic, and this is a product that I thought was like one of the most boring things we did is this mattress protector. Uh-huh. It just like protects your mattress from like if somebody pees on it. I don't know, <laughs> but <laughs> it um, has a cooling top. Oh, and awesome. so it's the same kind of fabric as the pillow. And yeah. uh, it just keeps your bed probably about 10 degrees cooler than normal. So, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. It's like become really popular. And I was like, oh, I thought that was going to be boring, but people like oh, being no. cold. <laughs> yes. I mean, I feel like that's the biggest thing for me between like temperature and then um, as long as it's like, I need it to be super dark and like those two things along with my pillows, like I'm good to go. Do you go with an eye mask or are you uh, just close your eyes real tight or shut the blinds or? Uh, I have blackout curtains. Okay. Um, I've tried an eye mask, I think once and I really didn't like it. (laughs) I was like, this is not for me. (laughs) So yeah. It's one of those products that we kind of like have toyed with a little bit like oh well this would be cool to have this but realistically everybody wears it once and then they don't wear it again (laughs) yeah also for me this i mean uh more of a girl thing i guess but uh it squishes my eyelashes (laughs) no i I heard that kind of uncomfortable you pay Um, a lot of money for those eyelashes too you know it's like (laughs) hey i've got a wife i pay those bills you know I have heard that there are some where it's, you know, they're not smushing your eyes. It's like almost like goggles, but covered out essentially. Yeah. But I haven't tried that one yet. So yeah, try the, try the night goggles. You'll love yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, when you say you're a side sleeper, mm-hmm. you know, there's kind of different types of side sleepers. How, how exactly are you positioned on your side? I would say, so I also have a body pillow. Okay. which is like, I cannot live without. Um, so it's like a full body, full length kind of. Yeah. Yeah. And do you cuddle that thing? What do you? I do. Okay. So it's like in between my arms and in between my legs. And I just <laughs> like <laughs> yep. wrap around it. Like it's a tree kind of, huh? Yep. <laughs> Pretty much. But I would say that I'm kind of like a, not solely on my side. I'm like kind of a side to front, if that mm-hmm. makes sense. So. Spend a little time on the tummy, huh? Yeah, yeah. Or are you like on top of the body pillow? Uh, no, not like directly on top, but like I definitely kind of like enrolled into it, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. But yeah. yeah, how does the pillow cube do while you're on your stomach? Is it uh problematic or is it? Uh, no, I think it works super well. Um, I just noticed that like if I do sleep on my stomach, it's just not like super comfortable for me. So I try, like, if I end up falling asleep directly on my stomach, I'll usually wake up like at some point in the middle of the night and just get back on my side. Um, go back to where you belong, you know? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Right. No, exactly. But yeah, no, I found the pillow cube works for either. And I mean, even just like resting, like laying down on my back. So I don't know, for me, it like works for, for it all. I love, I wake up, I spend like an hour on my back kind of every morning. My last little bit of sleep is on my back. And I also like to watch TV with my pillow cube, man. It's the best TV pillow out there, I think. I know. I should probably like bring some out to my couch as well. (laughs) 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 Yeah, I've got a lot of pillow cubes in my house. So my son's got a collection. It's pretty wild. That's amazing. um, How did you sleep last night? How many hours do you get? I got, well, here, I will actually can show you or tell you. Do you log this? Oh yeah. You got a little, I do. I do. Um, which honestly has made me just so much more diligent about my sleep, knowing Mm -hmm. that it's the first thing I do in the morning is I check my phone and I open up, um, my app. I have an aura ring and I, uh, um, yeah, I just check that. And especially knowing that I'm going to check it every morning makes me want to go. I mean, I should want to get better sleep for tons of reasons, but actually seeing that data the first thing in the morning, like I know if it, if I'm staying up till midnight or whatever, I know it's going to be a really crappy score along with not feeling great. Um, but, uh, but last night I got, I think it was, yeah, eight hours and 27 minutes. Wow. Yeah. 
You're taking care of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to. Yeah. So is that pretty calculated? You're like, Hey, I need to get eight hours to be like performing at a certain level. Yeah. I would say like eight to nine is like the best. Um, there definitely are some nights where, uh, tossing and turning a little more maybe, or I've got to get up a little earlier or the day just ended up being a tiny mm -hmm. bit longer. Um, and it'll, it might be around like seven, seven and a half, which isn't great, but I can still function pretty well on that, mm -hmm. but it's more about the consistency of it. So as long as I'm like consistently in that, like eight to nine or like eight to eight and a half, I think I'm good to go. So is your muscle recovery better when you're sleeping more? Absolutely. Yeah. Especially I can tell in my joints, like especially going through an ACL recovery process, um, or I'll notice it like in my shoulders and my elbows. Mm -hmm. Um, if I'm not getting good, consistent quality sleep, it's just, it's no good for anyone. Your body's like, broken. <laughs> yeah. It just like, and it just sucks. Cause I mean, I love going into the gym and not every day is going to be great, but it's just never fun when, you know, you don't get to do the things how you want to do them in the gym mm -hmm. because you know you aren't taking care of that sleep component so yeah i know how that feels every day i go to the gym actually <laughs> like hey i wanted to bench 400 pounds but instead i'm benching 160. <laughs> it's brutal you know that's just the life i chose yeah <laughs> um so in terms of uh dreaming mm -hmm. do you do you dream much do you remember any of these dreams um, I do have some really weird dreams. I normally don't remember a ton of them. Um, I will have the occasional ones of like, I'm at, you know, different competitions and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like I had one when I was bobsledding, I had a dream that my mom, for whatever reason, we were at a race and I, I was a brakeman, so I wasn't driving the sled. And in the dream, my mom decided to be the pilot. And I was like, no, mom, like you've never done this before. Mom, this you have really no idea, idea what you're doing. <laughs> Stop it. Yeah. And like, we were on some weird track that had, I think like the track in Lake Placid, for example, has 20 curves. And this track had like 30 to 40. And I was like, what is going on? Like, we're both going to die. Like, this is so horrible. At least horrible. you go out together though. <laughs> Yeah. So stuff like that. Um, yeah. Pretty weird dreams for sure. Yeah. I'll say that, but that's what yeah. we all do, you know? Yeah. Um, what were you like when you were 10 years old? Yeah. 10 years old. What grade is that? 10 years old is like fifth grade or yeah. Fifth or fourth kind of in that range. Fifth or fourth. Uh, I'm trying to think we moved around growing up. So I'm like trying to think of where we lived at that time. Um, I think, so I definitely was doing a lot of sports. Um, I was swimming a lot for sure. Um, but also did basketball, volleyball, um, pretty much anything I could do is softball. Uh, I was very quiet, like very, mm -hmm. very shy, very quiet. Um, and yeah. Were you buff kind of like coming out of the womb? <laughs> Uh, I don't know if I was like super buff, but I do remember like seeing pictures, um, like of me and my siblings at the beach. And I had like somewhat of like a four to six pack. And I was like, Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. And then like, were you naturally inclined to sports? Did your parents kind of influence that decision? Like, how did you gravitate so much to athletics? Yeah. So my parents are really athletic and they are and really into fitness and um they put us all in sports so I'm one of mm -hmm. six kids and it was like we're just gonna basically I'm sure just tire us out yeah to a certain extent um and I loved sports like that's where especially I think being more like shy and reserved that was my like comfort zone um and especially with like whenever we would move it was so awesome to have sports because it was just an immediate group of friends that are all interested yeah. in the same thing. Um, so I definitely gravitated to it in that way. And um, I definitely noticed that like I had um, 
some talent in certain sports and I was also really competitive. So it was fun um, to get to participate and compete and stuff. So, yeah. What was it like to have six, uh, be one of six kids? It's awesome. It's crazy, but it's awesome. Um, they are, and I'm not just saying this, but like they are legitimately my best friends. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's really cool. Um, I don't know. And even as we've grown up and we're all doing different things and um, I feel like we're becoming even closer, which is super cool. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. Are any of them in sports similarly to how you are? So pretty much everyone swam and mm -hmm. did like a bunch of other sports. Um, and then one of my brothers swam in college for a little bit. Um, and then it was cool. Like two of, or both my brothers um, started doing CrossFit shortly after I did and did some competing in that. Like my brother, one of my brothers was on a team at regionals back when regionals was a thing. Mm -hmm. um, and, and yeah, like everyone's super into fitness, like in different ways and stuff. And it's fun when we get together, we'll usually, I try to rope at least one of them in to do a workout with me. Um, and like, when I went to visit, uh, my siblings in Dallas last weekend, like we did, I took a CrossFit class with my brother and then I took this like circuit type fitness class with my sister. So yeah, we like to work out. <laughs> yeah. It's, you know, at least you know what you're good at and you stick yeah. to it and you yeah know, have fun as a family yeah so when did you start swimming at a really competitive kind of like lots of training level I would say um probably like eighth grade was when I started doing it um at a more elite level mm -hmm. um and to be honest, I did not enjoy it a ton. Um, yeah, I don't know anybody like, who does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I loved competing and that kind of drove me to put in the work, uh, you know, on the training side. And, uh, and then through high school, so we moved when I was a junior in high school to California and fortunately started training with a club team out there and got an amazing coach and which kind of allowed me to fall in love with the sport again, which was really cool. And I think because of that and really enjoying the process, um, I started to see kind of reap the benefits of that and like actually started getting a lot better, um, which gave me the opportunity to start um, just having different sets of goals and goals that I didn't think were possible, like stuff like making an Olympic trials or swimming at a school like Cal. And so it was, it was just really cool to see like a lot of those new doors to open up. So when you were in eighth grade, how many hours were you swimming a day? Uh, when we would have two a days, it was probably at least five, maybe six. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. <laughs> how did you want to do that? Was it just like this drive to beat people and and how, why did you choose swimming like because uh, swimming I feel like it's more commitment than like anything else yeah I don't think I realized that at the time um you just got snookered <laughs> yeah, huh yeah, yeah um I think out of all the sports I was doing that's the one I was the best at so I think mm -hmm. that's kind of how it got narrowed down um and when I went into high school my parents kind of push which I'm glad they did push me to just focus on one sport um, I think I would have probably, if I had to choose, I probably would have done a ton, maybe because I just didn't enjoy the swimming training as much, yeah. but, but I'm glad that they kind of pushed me to just select one. Um, and swimming was the one I was the most competitive in. So we stuck with that one. Um, and yeah, I think initially it was definitely, I, I loved competing and I loved racing and I knew that I had to put the work in, um, you know, all of those hours in order to, you know, be competitive and beat other people. So mm -hmm. I think that was the initial drive. And then, um, as I got into environments just with really great coaches, great teammates, I think it was, it was cool to, especially in college, um, that was like, I love being on a team. So even in club, getting to do relays, stuff like that, just being a part of something bigger than myself was a huge drive. Mm -hmm. 
what was your diet like as a high schooler? Because most high schoolers are just kind of eating whatever they want. They don't care, you know, and yeah. but even like high school girls, most of the time, you know, you're not eating like crazy amounts, but if you're swimming six hours a day, how, how does that work out? Oh, I was eating a lot. Yeah, I, I was eating a ton, <laughs> like so much pasta. Um, and I can't even remember a ton of what I was eating in high school, but um, but I remember in college, like so many bagels, tons of pasta. I I'm mean, yeah, we were just, yeah, yeah, <laughs> we were just burning it off like crazy. What's your diet like now? So now it's super regimented, especially in comparison to what it used to be. Um, so I log and weigh all my food every day. Um, and it's pretty like now I feel like I have, it's such a habit that it becomes, and to be honest, day to day, it pretty much looks the same. Um, mm -hmm. Like I'll switch out different proteins, different carbs, different vegetables, just so I don't get super sick of what I'm eating. Mm -hmm. um, but it's pretty much like exact day to day now. So yeah, you got a science and you're putting it only the fuel you need into that body. Is that? Yeah. And then I mean, like, I definitely have a sweet tooth and I'll have days where I'm like, Hey, I'm going to indulge in certain things or, you know, get to go out with friends and stuff and, you know, stuff like that. But what's, uh, what's indulging for you? Uh, it's usually some sort of baked good love okay. cookies. Um, and I usually end up just making cookies at home and then eating a bunch of them. <laughs> um, so how many, cause I, I think, Hey, I'm going to eat, I'm going to indulge. I'm going to have like an entire sleeve of double stuff Oreos, <laughs> you know, maybe a whole yeah. box. I don't know. Are, 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 do you have those moments or are you, you better uh, than the rest of us? So I usually, so the one, the cookies that I normally make, they're, um, oh, do you make healthy with, cookies? Okay. So they kind of are, <laughs> <laughs> but, oh man, that is not the same. <laughs> okay. But the thing is, I actually like no joke prefer in most cases prefer to eat these over like a store-bought type oh, thing. Yeah. Um, and not because I'm like, oh, I mean, it is nice that I'm like, it's not going to F up my stomach or anything, mm -hmm. but, um, but I genuinely just crave these more. Um, so I'll usually eat like, if I am really going for it, like five of them or something. Oh, wow. So. Yeah. You're, so you're a lightweight in the eating unhealthy, <laughs> but they're bigger than like an Oreo. <laughs> okay. They're like three Oreos. <laughs> I, I could do more than five, you know? So you went to Cal yeah. and won a national title at Cal as a team. Mm -hmm. What was that like? That was crazy. Um, so we won NC2A is my junior and senior year. Um, so I transferred to Cal my freshman year. I went to Notre Dame Um transferred to Cal my sophomore year we got third um and I was just pumped to be there I was mm -hmm. like this is just like I must be dreaming um I just you know the first go around or when I had started high school um to compete at schools like that just wasn't really in the cards mm -hmm. and, and so it was just crazy you know my sophomore year at NC2A is to be there and to um compete on relays and so going into my junior year, we had just a stacked crew, um, and especially on the relays. Um, and I think it was my junior year, we were trying to break an American record, um, which was crazy. And it was just awesome. Like that team was just super, super special. And I think um, like most sport teams, it's like you just go through a lot of shit together and a yeah. lot of really brutal workouts. And we just had a great team culture too, which, um, I'm super grateful for my coaches for that. Um, they were very much about, you know, no individual is above the team. And I think really everyone embraced that. So I think, you know, showing up to these really, really like to this day, those workouts by far are the worst I've ever done. Like, mm -hmm no CrossFit workout or anything like that has even compared to some of those. Um, but, you know, but we showed up every morning and it was kind of like, you know, some days you don't feel like you can 
push through it for yourself, but you know, you look to your teammates and you're like, I'm going to do it for those guys. So, Mm -hmm. um, so it was just awesome. Like at that meet to just have all of that hard work, you know, come to fruition and just get to celebrate it with, um, just some amazing people. So, yeah, I love it when you can see the culmination of a lifetime of hard work and you're like, each one of us was an eighth grader and just, you know, pushing ourselves so hard. We, we struggled, you know, through high school to like get to the point where we can go to this, you know, elite, you know, athletic, uh, team. And now you, you do it, you know, and not that many people get to have that moment where they actually, it works and it comes out on top and it's like, wow, that's special to have that, that moment. And, you know, there's a, how many college swimmers, how many high school swimmers and to be at the, like, okay, I don't even know how many people are on a team, 10, 20 people, 30 people. It's like small group. That's actually yeah. reaping that reward, you know? Right. Twice no, back right. to back. Yeah. You're like, I know I did it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's, it's pretty crazy. And I think sometimes like, it's cool to reflect on it a bit. Cause I think even in the moment, sometimes it's hard to even like at those moments, step back enough in retrospect to like really, uh, like you said, like really see like, man, like all of those crazy early mornings and like days where I wanted to quit and like, you know, it's just, it's yeah, it just all pays off. So, yeah, it's yeah. cool to me too, that you're thinking of like, I'm doing this for my teammates. You know, that was your thought that like pushed you through. Cause I think our mm-hmm. society is very me centric right now, you know, and you're like, Hey, yeah. <laughs> these are my motivation. I'm like, Hey, good yeah. for you. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> Yeah, no, I feel like that's, uh, I don't know, that's kind of where I feel like I thrive. Um, like even at for with the CrossFit Games, um, going individual was a huge, huge goal of mine. And I'm super thankful that I got to experience that. Um, but two years prior, I got to compete um, on a team and go to the games. And that was just like one of the coolest experiences. And um And one that, you know, the reason I kind of ended up doing that was, um, I had a shoulder injury and, um, my, and like through the rehab process, one of my best friends at the time was like, Hey, you know, we're going to think of putting a team together. And I was like, I don't even know if I can compete this year. And like, those people are like, they are a huge, huge reason why I was able to get back and compete that year. Cause I had that just external, you know, like push and motivation from them. Um, and that I knew they were counting on me. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what caused you to leave the pool and hop into CrossFit? Yeah. So I definitely, after, uh, college was over, I knew I was going to be done swimming, um, was super grateful and thankful for the experiences, but was like, it's time. I'm done. <laughs> Is it because you hated the workouts? Did you feel like it wasn't going to be like a good career path? What was that like final, like, I'm out of here? Um, I don't know if I ever really thought about it being a career past college. Um, mm-hmm. And I think I had, I didn't feel like I had left anything behind um, or like stone unturned. I was like, I feel like I reached my fullest potential in there. So I was okay leaving it. I mean, of course there's things you're like, Oh, I wish I could have done that a little bit better. And, but I mean, I think we can all look back on everything and think that way. So, um, so I knew I was going to be done and yeah, I just was ready to move on. And I don't think I could have, to be honest, uh, gone through, you know, years more of that type of training. Mm-hmm. So I think that was also a pretty big reason. Yeah. Every time I get in the pool to actually do a workout, I'm like, oh, I don't know if I could go through another day of that, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah my swim workouts are significantly shorter now. <laughs> so do you still swim like for fitness for like training for CrossFit or? Uh, so actually CrossFit was the reason I got back in the pool. So okay. I definitely think I was a little burned out. Um, from swimming in general, or I should say a lot burnt out, um, which I think is relatively normal just with the amount of hours Mm -hmm. that we were putting in. And I honestly was like, Hey, if I never swim 
you know, a bunch of laps again, I'm, I'm cool with that. Like I'll go in the pool to hang out, sit in a floaty and like, that's, that's about it. Um, and then when I started competing in CrossFit, um, you know, some of these events have swimming in them. And so I was I like, I did not know that, but I don't know anything about oh. CrossFit. So I'm going to need some education oh, okay. here in a minute. <laughs> no worries. So some of the events do have, especially open water swimming. And so I figured I should at least get in the pool a bit. Um, so I can just be, I mean, I feel very confident in my swimming ability, but, um, I was like, you know, just to prepare and get used to, and well, one thing I wasn't used to was, uh, swimming like in, uh, in college was, you know, we would just do swimming. We didn't want to do swimming, get out and do, you know, thrusters or something and then get back in. So, um, so a lot was for that, just seeing how that would feel. Um, and so started swimming mostly as like a recovery piece. And then sometimes adding in workouts where I'd like bring a sandbag or something or do push ups and then swim. Um, I'm sure I looked like a crazy person bringing a bunch of equipment to the pool, but, uh, but yeah, no. So, and it started to be more fun, which was really cool. Um, and now, now I haven't been able to do it as much just coming off of my injury, but but I'll usually go in like once every two weeks just to like easy 500 or so and yeah. call it a day. So if you were talking to the person who knew the least in the world about CrossFit, yeah. which is me, yeah. <laughs> what would you tell that person? Like, what is CrossFit? Like, what are you, how do you compete? How do you get points? How does that work? Yeah. So as far as like the sport, so each season starts with the CrossFit Open, which is actually coming up in a few weeks. And that is anyone can sign up for it. You do mm -hmm. it in your local CrossFit affiliate. Um, it's now, it used to be five weeks of workouts, one workout a week um, that gets uh, broadcasted um, to everyone. And then you have a certain time frame to do it. It's usually about four days and you can do it as many times as you want. Um, and this year it's going to be, and it was last year, they changed it to three weeks. So three works at three workouts over the span of three weeks. Um, and then based on your standings, there's now, so it's actually different than when I competed. So I feel like I'm still even learning about mm -hmm. this, but there is a semifinal, um, and, or a quarterfinal semifinal, and then the CrossFit games. Um, and so that's kind of the trajectory for like the competitive season, but like CrossFit just as a training, I would say like, it's a combination of like endurance, Olympic lifting, powerlifting, gymnastics, kind of like everything and anything. Um, and one of the reasons I kind of gravitated to it out of college was that it, it's definitely not boring. Um, I also loved lifting, so I wanted to do that. And that's kind of why I got into CrossFit. Um, but yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So are you planning on competing again in the future? Is your injury preventing you from that? Like what is your kind of next steps there? Yeah. So no more competing. Um, I, so I think it's interesting because I think if I hadn't, injured my knee I might have gone on maybe a few more years but um uh not sure which for I mean I was bobsledding um but but yeah so for right now uh no competing which is a little weird um for sure uh especially coming back from an injury because every other injury I've worked back from I've had you know this set competition in place and so it's a little, um, I definitely struggle going into the gym without that specific goal in mind. So I've definitely had to work on switching up what my goals are, um, and how to have goals separate from competing. So, yeah. so are you doing CrossFit now as just like, this is how I'm going to be healthy and strong. And I want to live my life in this place of fitness, you know? Yeah. So like right now for me, um, I really want to lift heavy. Like I still want to put up some PRs and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I would say that's the main goal. 
and have thought about maybe, you know, signing up for a lifting comp here and there just for fun. Um, and just yeah, for fun. Like, and you're going to be in yeah. the Olympics in a few years, probably. <laughs> you're like, oh, yeah, just for fun. <laughs> But so that's the priority. And then for me, doing CrossFit type Metcon workouts are just really fun for me. Mm -hmm. um, so usually two days a week, I'll either like get inspiration on Instagram from like a cool workout I saw, or I'll write something my own and then just do it at home or at the gym. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. So during all your uh, you know, time, you've had amazing successes winning these national championships you know like competing at the crossfit games what have been some of your failures or or biggest frustrations and what have you learned from those moments mm. sorry to bring I, up the bad times <laughs> no 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 i mean honestly and that's the thing is it sucks to go through that stuff but without those you just not saying you don't learn from things going right, but I feel like you learn a hell of a lot more from things going mm -hmm. wrong. Um, and it just sucks when you're in it uh, to see what that learning experience is supposed to be or why you're supposed to be going through that. Um, I would say that like when it comes to CrossFit, I would say that um, in 2019, I definitely, didn't perform how I was hoping to. Mm -hmm. um, and I think at first I put a lot of, cause in that year, um, the, the games was just very different than years past um, in how, uh, how many people were competing in it and when they did the cuts and like the order of types of workouts and stuff like that. Um, and I think initially I was just so mad at that. I was like, this mm -hmm. is unfair. And, you know, I didn't get to have like this CrossFit games experience that I had in my head, um, that I'd wanted for so many years. And, um, and I think it definitely took me a bit to let that go. And cause I have no control over that and being frustrated mm -hmm. about that is just not a good use of time or energy. And also I'm definitely not, wasn't the only one going through that, mm -hmm. um, at all. And I think what really helped me was my coach forcing me to reflect on that and really ask myself, okay, what went wrong? What went right of the things that went wrong? What were, what was in my control and what can I do about that in a plan moving forward? Um, cause I think it's tough to want to do that sometimes and really force yourself to reflect because I don't know, for me, I just wanted to move on to the next year. I was like, let's just forget about that. Sweep it on the rug. Like I'll just make it up next year. We'll be good to go. Um, and so I think, um, that along with, uh, like two years prior, I missed going to the games by two spots. Um, and I was just like, what, like, can I just get a break? Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but like, honestly, I think it really forced me to understand like why I was doing this and it couldn't just all be about going to the games. Mm -hmm. Um, and while I think, I mean, that was a hundred percent, a huge goal of mine. Um, and that was part of it, but I think it really forced me to, um, just stay as present as possible um, instead of getting and putting so much weight on like, oh, I'll be happy when I do this. And, you know, I'll feel better about all this stuff if I just get to this spot. It's like, that's just because basically you're just wishing time away, which mm -hmm. is no way to be. Um, so, so yeah. Yeah. It's about enjoying the journey. You know, it's like, yeah. if you lose in the championship of something, every game, every practice, they're not a waste. Right. It was all for something and it was fun and you, and you didn't accomplish the goal necessarily that you had in mind, but mm -hmm. that molded you into who you are. There's something better there now. And that, that makes it worth it, you know, and mm -hmm. it is easy to be like, Oh man, I can't wait when I'm more successful in 10 years and I have more money. Life <laughs> will be so much 
better than. Right. You know, it's like, enjoy the moment, live in yeah. it. You know, that, that's what makes life really great. You know, yeah. I, I, uh, kind of looking back at what you did after you lost in that 2019 games, love the fact that you just took and like had to own the moment, you know, and say, because it is easy to sweep it under the rug and be like, I'm just going to move on to the next thing and not feel that pain. Yeah. But you have to take that and kind of absorb it and be like, mm. how can I get better? Right. And we take that time to be like, how can I get better? Then that's why I think losing is tough because you have to feel that anybody can win. It's like fun to win. Oh yeah. Great. We won. Cool. Let's go get some <laughs> yeah. eat afterwards. You know, yeah. losing's like, I got to live in this moment of kind of frustration and anger and okay. turn that frustration and anger into something practical. That's mm -hmm. real improvement. It makes me better. And yeah, it's cool that you're able to do that. So, um, what, uh, how do you define success? Ooh. Uh, I think to me, success is doing everything I can in my control to reach my full potential. Mm -hmm. And I know that's kind of vague, but, um, but I think it's, I think it's also doing, you know, using, um, like the gifts I've been given and using like my work ethic and stuff to also, you know, make me the best version of me, but then also help other people around me. Um, cause I think that's where it's also like, you know, for example, being on a team, like, I think that's, again, like success when you get to, you know, when it's just about you, I mean, that's cool, but it's, but it's greater when you get to like, hopefully empower or encourage other people around you to also be their best. Um, and so, yeah, I think that's what it's about for me. So when it comes to encouraging other people to be their best, mm -hmm. you know, being an example, a role model, those people, like the, the people who see you, uh, you know, you're, your fans, the, you know, girls that are growing up right now and seeing what you've accomplished and who you are, what's your takeaways? What are your, what's your advice to those people? I think like we've been talking about is really embracing the journey that you're on mm -hmm. and, um, and not like wishing you had someone else's life. You know what I mean? Cause like we all have our own gifts and like, that's why we're supposed to help each other because like the gift that I have, like someone else doesn't have and the gift they have, I don't have. And like, that's what we're supposed to be doing is helping each other. And, um, just like as a community lifting each other up, um, mm -hmm. and not to get too corny here and stuff, but, um, I like it when you're corny. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's really about like, um, you know, having, you know, like an attitude of gratitude, um, you know, being focusing on, and I definitely like have to check in with this a lot is being grateful for what you have and not getting super wrapped up in the stuff you don't have. Mm -hmm. Cause like you're saying, it's like, it's really easy to be like, well, when I have this amount of money or when I get this house or whatever, it's like, instead of being like, man, like, but I have, there's so much I am grateful for now. And not, and that doesn't mean like you're complacent and you're like, oh, I'm good. Like I'm done. I don't have to go out for anything else. But I think when you lead with that, it's just so much, I think, healthier for yourself and for other people. Um, and just, I don't know, allows for a better perspective on um, all things in life. So, yeah, that's awesome. I think gratitude is one of the absolute keys to happiness. When you're thankful for what you have, you're not focused and comparing all the time it allows you yeah. to just live in like a happy spot you're just thankful yeah and then i love what you said about you know serving other people mm -hmm. you know you have these gifts and if you can use your gifts to help other people that's what brings you real joy um one of the things that i dealt with in my life i don't know if i told you this before but i went to columbine high school mm -hmm. and i was there during the shooting and oh my gosh it was like such a sad time is yeah. like the best way to put it. And that sadness lingers for years. And how I really was able to get over that is taking time to dedicate my life to serving other people, mm -hmm. you know? And so like service for me is always this thing. It's like, 
again, we focus on ourselves, but when we can focus on others, it's like, wow, like yeah. that's when we can find that like peace. And, you know, 100%. 100. So I wanted to uh, see if I could end on a silly note. Yeah. So I, uh, I have three kind of weird questions for you. Okay. What character on a TV show do you most identify with? Oh, man. Okay, think. we've got some interesting TV characters on The Office. Uh, my favorite don't show is... watch The Office. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no. Who even I are like... you? Do you not watch TV at all? I honestly don't watch many. Are you going to be like, hey, shows. this character on MASH that I watched when I grew up? <laughs> oh man. Uh... Man, Parks and Rec? I don't watch that either. <laughs> Have you seen Breaking Bad? No. Okay, what about ER? Go way back. Oh, man. Okay. Well, it turns out I asked you a really bad question, but I still think the question holds, and it was funny. So It was. Okay. Well, now I feel like I'm going to ask my siblings what they would think. Yeah, they'll give us a good answer. Get back yeah. to me. Maybe post it for us. Like, hey, yeah. my TV character is this. Yes. Um, okay. If you could make any food healthy, what would it be? Uh, probably pizza oh that is a perfect answer because <laughs> i usually just want it like all the time <laughs> and like healthy like you know healthy pizza like, sucks you can it say it yeah. it does like where the cookies i'm like these don't taste like they're healthy i really like these but healthy pizza i'm like that's just not the same favorite slice of pizza anywhere in the country uh, probably Luminati's. Where's that at? Uh, so it's actually out of Chicago, but they. Oh, Luminati's. Oh yeah. yeah. I think it's said Illuminati. I was like, wow, that's. Oh no. Sorry. I probably said it wrong, but they actually, um, opened up one literally across the street from where I live. So I was like, this is dangerous. That's a heavy but, pizza. That That's one yeah. that, like, you'll feel that for the next week. Oh, for sure. they have a really good thin crust though too. So yeah. My favorite slice of pizza is a place called Lucali. If you're okay. ever in Brooklyn or Miami Beach. Oh, the okay. Brooklyn one's better, but I'll check that, that out. That is the uh pizza of choice. I brought my son there and we eat a lot of pizza together, kind of like nuts. And <laughs> he's like, Dad, how did they do this? He was <laughs> he was amazed. That's amazing. So, okay. How many push-ups can you do in a row? Do you have a record? Oh man. Now I kind of want to try this. Not like now, but yeah, no, right now. <laughs> I've got all day. I've got nowhere to go. I want to see you do all your push-ups. I actually, you know, funny. So in high school, I remember I was in some class where I don't remember why we had to do a max set of push-ups. It wasn't like PE or anything. Mm -hmm. It was like a history class or something. And I remember that I, I think I scared some of the guys in the class with, uh, cause I think I beat one of the boys. Oh, <laughs> but, probably beat all the boys. <laughs> but, um, uh, I would say at least 40. Like in a row, right? Yeah, in a row, okay. no stopping. Okay. Yeah, I think. Maybe yeah. we, maybe we need like a, you know, those like videos that kind of like speed them up. Let's yeah, get, yeah. Like a, let's get one of those of you doing push-ups. Yeah, yeah. I want to see. I know. It. I do kind of want to try this now. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so forty push-ups. I was just wondering if maybe you could beat the entire Pillow Cube team if we all like combined our efforts. Like I did some, everyone else did some. <laughs> maybe you could beat us all. So. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to have to try that. I'll send you the video. Okay, let me know the number. Yeah. And then we'll do how many we can do and see who wins. Perfect. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> well, thanks for uh, podcasting with me. I yeah, uh, genuinely love getting to know you and, and kind of hearing your story. I, I think you're an inspiration in terms of just like your discipline and your commitment to be like, I am like making choices on how I want to live my life and uh, just going with it. And so... Thanks for sharing that and uh, have a good one. Thank you. You too.